Cut us out of the grave. Sing it out, church. Yours is the heart that is beating inside us. Yours is the glory. This week, the Bible is full of stories where when people worshiped, that changed what they were going through. It changed. So if imagine this morning, church, imagine with me for a second. If if the if the if your praise could open a jail cell, if your praise could make a wall fall, what God would not do for you? It changes things. He has given us every authority under heaven to tread on serpents. The Bible says we can tell this mountain to move from here to there. It takes just a little bit of faith and it will move. So this morning as we sing this next song, let's lift our hands toward heaven this morning. Show God our praise is a way to say, God, thank you. Thank you for everything you've given to us. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us. But most importantly, God, thank you for who you are. We praise you, Jesus, this morning. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Tell God how much he means to us this morning. We worship you, Jesus.
his children. We declare today, Father God, that every day of our life is going to be the best day of our life. But more than that, God, we're going to live every day to fulfill the purpose and worship you always. In Jesus' name we pray. And before you see it, go ahead and wave at your neighbors. Go ahead and turn around and wave to Facebook Live. Good morning, everybody. We are so glad you're here today. And again, we're big thanks to everybody watching on Facebook Live. And I want to encourage you guys to continue sharing the message. You're making such an impact just by sharing the Facebook Live. So you can take out your phone right now and share that. Share this week's message. You can go back and share last week's message. Pastor Sam did an amazing job. His message was so good. And to all of our vis visitors here today, we are so happy that you joined us. Victory, give our visitors a big welcome. If that's you and you're visiting with us for the first time, if you wouldn't mind to just raise up your hand. These ushers in blue have a connection card and a pen, and all you have to do is take that card, fill, use that pen, and fill it out, and put it in the offering plate in just a moment. And if you're visiting with us, we also have a gift for you out in the lobby in what is usually our cafe. Just something to say thank you for spending your morning with us and how much we appreciate you. And I also encourage you to take the four-week test drive. Everybody say four weeks. Four weeks. Just come, check us out, look under the hood, check the tires. We promise you won't be disappointed. We have a few announcements for you guys this morning. First, we have water baptisms coming up on September 20th. Just give praise for baptism. And what's awesome about that, it's on this church's 16th birthday. Woo. So Josh says, Victory's getting ready to drive, but I say we're going to have a sweet 16 with baptisms. That's what I say. So, <laughs> so if you want to sign up for <laughs> Thank you, Ron. So we sign up for baptisms uh, out in the info desk in the lobby. And we also, in the info desk, have pop sockets for sale. So I have one of these on my phone right now. If you don't know what pop sockets are, they just stick on the back of your phone right here. And you can move them around and bend them, and they're just easy to hold your phone. I convinced John to get one, and now he loves it. So you can go get one. <laughs> All right, as we get our tithe and offering ready, I just want to turn your attention to Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given more than all of the others who are making contributions. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she had on to live. So this verse brings me back to a time when I was a freshman in college and I had no money whatsoever, but I wanted to be faithful to God because I knew the, what the Bible says, that when we are a blessing to him, he's a blessing to us. And I didn't have a job. All I had was odd jobs, babysitting here every once in a while. And sometimes I'd only have 2 to $5 to put in the offering plate. And I kept thinking to myself, what is $2 going to do? What is $5 going to do? But it's not about how much money we put in. It's about our heart and our faithfulness and our willing to serve and our willing to give. You know, your neighbor next to you could give $1,000, but with a sad heart and not want to do it, but you could give $20, and that's worth more because you have a cheerful heart and you're a cheer cheerful giver. God judges our heart and not how much we put in the offering plate. So I just want to encourage you guys. You might think, well, I don't have enough money. What is this small amount of money going to do for the kingdom of God? Amazing things. I mean, we're doing so much just down at Skateland, and your contribution is not just, oh, how much money can I give? I'm giving more money than my neighbors, so God loves me more. It's not like that. <laughs> so I just want to um, encourage you guys as you give today, think about that, and if y'all could stand with me as we get ready to sing this next song and as we give our offering, if you would pray with me. Lord, I thank you for this service today, and I thank you for everybody here, God, and I am thankful that you're in this room right now, and your presence is so powerful, and your peace and your anointing is in this room and on everybody in here, God. And I thank you that as we sing this next song, burdens and chains will be lifted off of us, Lord. And I am so thankful that we can come here in this place today and just worship you freely because you are the God Almighty, Lord. And I thank you so much for your presence here, Lord. And I thank you for everything you're about to do, God. Be blessed as you give today.
band, you tore it up. Give our band some love today. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for joining us online. And I just want to take a moment and say thank you so much for continuing to share this word on Facebook every single week. We are reaching exponentially more people than we ever have before, and it's because of your faithfulness in sending the gospel out to as many people as possible. Can I get an amen from somebody? So our pastors are on vacay today. When you should cheer for that, that's good news because keeping our pastors healthy is essential to the vision and the mission of Victory Church. If we're going to continue to grow and we're going to continue to be creative and we're going to continue to reach people, how many of you know we need to have healthy leaders? Can I get an amen? Now you have a part to play in this. I want to encourage you this week, please pray for our pastors. Pray for them while they're away. Pray for them while they're recharging because you know the enemy would love to do nothing less than attack them while they're away. Pray for them this week. You know, I have a very unique job. I have a front row seat each and every day to seeing what they do and seeing the weight that they carry and the weight that's even above and beyond what a normal pastor's job would be, like overseeing all these building projects like Skate Zone or the outbuilding or the asphalt. Or maybe if you come in the back door, you notice that the bank is starting to pull away from the building and it's causing the AC units to tip. I mean, these are things that they're overseeing. Or our social media presence, just coming up with fresh ideas, creative ideas on social media every week to reach people, or online service production. You've probably noticed that when COVID hit, we went from zero online production to total online production. Well, somebody has to make that needle move each and every week. And that somebody is our pastors, and I want to encourage you to pray for them. This is probably one of the heaviest seasons of ministry they've ever had, and not because things are bad. It's because things are growing, and they're so good, and nothing blesses them more than seeing your lives impacted. I want to encourage you, will you pray for them this week? Can I get an amen? Amen. Let's get after it today. You know, people are known for the thing they do best. When I say Tom Brady, Steve, well, and now Chris, you think of a great quarterback. When I say Michael Jordan, you think of a great basketball player. When I say Abraham Lincoln, you think of a great leader. When I say Donald Trump and Joe Biden, you think of a great mess. <laughs> but you know, people are often over, willing to overlook flaws if someone has accomplished something great. If I told you that Tom Brady is a horrible ping pong player, would you care? Do we care that Michael Jordan was a mediocre baseball player? No, because their greatness in other areas causes us to overlook some of their shortcomings. As Christians, we call ourselves believers. And we're not just defined by what we call ourselves. We're defined by what we do. We're defined by action. And as believers, we are called to action daily. The Bible says in James 1.22, but be Doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves, a.k.a. no armchair quarterbacks allowed. We need to get in the game. And we're living in a season where it's easy to be discouraged. Whatever your beliefs may be concerning the COVID crisis or the political unrest, we can all agree that we've been affected by it. And it's been one crazy year. Am I right? But you know, Jesus saw times like this coming. He said in Matthew 24, 12, he said, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And we're seeing that. We're seeing a culture that is growing cold in love. Jesus said in Luke 18, 80, he said, But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? Jesus was looking into the future and he was like, Am I going to find anybody? When I come back, am I going to find any people of faith? And I want to speak today. I want to prophesy over you today that Jesus, when you come back, you're going to find some people of faith and they're going to be right here in this place. 
And it seems like lawlessness is at an all-time high. I mean, it's easy to just sit on our hands and become disconnected or apathetic about the season we're living in. But this morning is about fighting back. 2 Corinthians 10.4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Look, we are not victims. We are not helpless. We are not some doormat to be walked on. We have the tools to change our world for the better. And this morning is a call to action. This morning we're calling for action over apathy. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. God, I thank you for your presence that's so strong in this room. And I'm asking right now, Lord, set a fire on our lives. Set a fire in our heart. Light us up in areas that we've grown dull and we all know what those areas are, but we submit those areas to you today, Lord, and set fire to them. If there be anyone in this room or online who doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives, I'm asking right now for that to change. And by the end of this message, they come to know you as Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Action over apathy. What is apathy? Apathy is a lack of interest. It's a lack of enthusiasm or a loss of enthusiasm. Maybe we were enthusiastic at one point and somewhere along the line we've lost that. Or a lack of concern or a loss of concern where maybe we had concern in certain areas and over time we've just become dull to it. It's, it's the meh emoji. We've all got a little meh emoji in our lives. That used to be the way we described the potheads in college. Now it describes all of us. <laughs> that was a joke. But apathy makes us numb. It causes us to lose hope. It makes us want to give up. It can infect every area of our lives and creep in without us even knowing it. Apathy causes us to approach life from a defeated mindset. It reinforces the thought that things aren't going to get any better and there's nothing we can do about it. But in reality, that's the farthest thing from the truth. Jesus said in Matthew 5.14, he said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And Jesus was talking to ordinary people like me and like us. And he said, you are the light of the of the world. While the world is growing dimmer and the world is growing darker, we are shining brighter. That contrast church is going to continue to grow because the world is going to keep getting darker and we're going to appear brighter and brighter and we will not be defined by the meh emoji. Can I get an amen? amen. See, faith is belief plus action. Faith is what we believe and then the way that we act on our beliefs. And what we believe is key. Why? Because what we believe will be reinforced by action in what we say and in what we do. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, I believed and therefore I spoke. Ultimately, it's our actions that will define us. See, action is the application of what we believe. Action is the way we apply our beliefs. And it's belief combined with action that brings change. And this morning is about turning belief into action. This morning is about turning the met emoji into the rock on, let's do this emoji. Let me show you how this works. We, as a church, we believe that our God is eternal all-powerful, and created the universe. If you believe that, say amen. amen. We believe he created all things for his purpose. If you believe that, say amen. amen. See, Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Colossians 1-16 says, everything was created through him, through Jesus, and for him, for Jesus. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. We believe that he created us 
with purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God created us to do good things. And you say, well, I believe that. How can I act upon that? How can I take action over apathy in my life? And it's like this. When I think about God and his power, when I think about God as the creator, and I think about God who assigned purpose, it reminds me of one of the most important things I've ever learned in my life and one of the most important things you'll ever learn, and it's this. It isn't about me. It isn't about us. None of this is about me. This sermon's not about me. This church isn't about me. This community isn't about me. This world isn't about me. Life has always and will always be about God and his plan. But you have a purpose that is special, that is unique, and that is important to that plan. And our lives and actions exist to contribute to God's plan. You say, well, how, how do I act on that? How do I turn that belief into an action? Like this, Colossians 3.17 tells us, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. See, we're going to live every day for God's plan. When we wake up in the morning, we can wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. When I wake up in the morning, I can get out of bed and I can say, God, this day isn't about me. This day is about you. But you've given me gifts and you've given me talents and you've given me a future. So now I'm going to give everything I've got for the next 24 hours or however long I'm on this earth to contribute to that plan. And if you do that, you can start a successful day that way. Amen. Turning belief into action. You know, we believe that God created man, mankind in perfection. But man sinned and he made a mess of things. See, Romans 5.12 says, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone for everyone sin. See, we've got a sin problem. As humanity, we've got a sin problem. How do we act on that belief? See, like Adam, we're human. We are susceptible to messing up. We're susceptible to making mistakes and we need to stay on guard. 1 Peter 5.8 says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, your enemy, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. See, when you wake up in the morning and say, God, it's not about me, it's about you. And God, I'm going to live this day for you. You should know that the enemy is going to try to derail you. The enemy is going to try to take you out with temptations and keep you from helping God and completing that plan. And the Bible says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. And while resisting the enemy, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. See, so often we let the devil convince us that we're all alone and that nobody can relate to us and that nobody could possibly understand what we're going through. And the truth is, there are other people in the world going through what you're going through. There are other people who are suffering in the way that you're suffering. But it says God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you were tempted, he will show you a way out. So that you can always endure. There's always a way out. You may feel trapped like your life is one big escape room. But God put an exit in place for your safety. So don't give up. Don't give in to temptations. Don't give in to those pressures. Look for the way out. Maybe it'll be in a place you never thought it would be, but it's there because God loves you and God cares for you and God made a way of escape for you. So be on the lookout for it. And if you do stumble and if you do mess up, we believe that God sent Jesus to fix the mess. Man made a mess of things and God sent in the sanitation department to clean it up. And his name is Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says, 
For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We can take action over failure. See, God solved our problems. God solved our problems so that we don't have to. Look, when you have a guest come over, what do you do? You spend three hours or more just frantically cleaning up your house for them to come over. And then they come in and what do we all say? Sorry about the mess. <laughs> like we never even touched it. Like, yeah, it's messy. It's just always like this. And we've been frantically cleaning the whole time. But look, when you invite Jesus over... You don't have to clean up the mess before he gets there. In fact, when Jesus gets there, he'll clean up the mess for you. God solved our problem. See, eternal life is available to you right now, today. Believe in Jesus. You might feel like your life is a prison, but here's the thing. The prison door is open. You feel like you're, you're stuck in prison, but the door is open. All you have to do is stand up and walk out of it. And I encourage you, walk into your freedom today. Everybody falls. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody messes up. But what separates the winners is that the winners get up one more time than they fall down. And I encourage you today, no matter what mistakes you've made, get up. You don't have to solve all of your problems before coming to Jesus. Come to Jesus he is the solution. Amen? We believe that Jesus came to fix the mess. We believe Jesus can fix every mess. Jesus can fix every mess. Because of Jesus, forgiveness is ours. Say, I'm forgiven. Because of Jesus, forgiveness is ours. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from every unrighteousness. This is life changing because forgiveness belongs to you. It's yours. That means you don't have to live in guilt anymore. You don't have to live with regrets anymore. You can take action over guilt in your life. Do not spend one more day putting yourself down. Do not spend one more day beating yourself up. Do not spend one day living in regret. You know, if you spent half the time you spend hating yourself, hating the enemy, he'd be on the run in every area of your life and he wouldn't come back. You say, well, John, what does that look like? Here's what it looks like. You come to God and you say, God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, my Savior. I messed up. Up and I sinned against you by X, Y, Z, and you say whatever it is. Even if it's the ugliest thing that's ever come out of your mouth, you say it out loud to him. Here's what I did. And then you say, I'm sorry for my sin, and I confess it to you right now. Jesus, I repent of my actions, and I turn back towards you, and thank you for forgiving me. And you know what? God forgives us 100% of the time, and you can let that baggage go. But it's not automatic. It's not automatic. Today's about action. You can believe that and not have it operate in your life. You have to take the action. You have to make it personal and make it for you. And the good news is it is for you. It's for every single person who hears my voice right now. It is for you. God created this for you. Because of Jesus, forgiveness is ours. Because of Jesus... We are not afraid. Say, I am not afraid. Because of Jesus, we're not afraid. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear. What has God given us? He has given us power. That means you have power. He has given us love. That means you have love. He has given us a sound mind. That means you have a mind that is stable. And you say, well, I don't feel that way. But you, you have it. You're just not acting on it yet. It's there for you. Begin to act on it. Hebrews 2.14 says, Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. See, Jesus had to become like us 
so that he could deliver us from the fallen state that mankind was in. It says, for only as a human being could he die. He couldn't die unless he became human. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. You can take action over fear in your life. You say, well, I believe that. How do I act upon it? See, even the worst fear, the fear of death, is nothing. Even the worst fear, if you trace most of your fears to their conclusion, they're going to end in death. But even the worst fear is nothing. God has never abandoned us in life. He's not going to abandon us at the moment of death. When we breathe our last breath here, we'll open our eyes in eternity. And it won't be in confusion. And it won't be in fear. And it won't be in agony. It'll be in the presence of our loving Savior. And here's the key to complete freedom from fear. Once you settle it in your heart, that death is a promotion. Death is a promotion You've just taken Satan's worst case scenario away from him as a weapon. And you can turn it against him by enjoying the time that you have left. Some of you have lived under the oppression of fear for so long that you can't even imagine your life without it. You've lived with that fear with you for so many years that you can't even picture yourself living free from it. And I want to encourage you today to visualize it. See yourself free from it. See yourself in the destination that you're heading. Don't let fear cause you to lose the fire in your life because you can have freedom from fear in Jesus' name. Don't live in fear. Take action over it. What does that look like? Well, maybe, maybe you get delivered instantly, and I hope that's the case, but maybe it's, it's a progression for you. Maybe you have to stand up and say, and I'm going to spend five minutes right now fear-free. Jesus, for the next five minutes, I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to do it the way I want to do it, and fear isn't going to impact my thoughts, and fear isn't going to impact my actions, and maybe you're going to live five minutes like that, and maybe next week you're going to say, I'm ready to live 15 minutes of my day like that, and I'm going to live it, and then maybe next month you're like, I'm going to live a whole hour free from it, and then maybe six months from now you're living a whole day or a whole week, and you walk out of it, but you have to take action. You can't be the doormat. You can't just lay there and hope things will change because they're not going to change. You have to get up and take the step and you can do it and you have help and we're here to help you. Hallelujah on three. <laughs> because of Jesus, healing is available to us. Because of Jesus, healing is available to us. See, when we were born again, meaning when we gave our lives to Jesus, the Bible says we became a new creation. Well, what was that new creation? That new creation is that our spirit came to life for the first time. Our spirit became brand new. But our bodies didn't. Our bodies stayed the same. We got a brand new spirit, but we got the same body. The spirit doesn't need healing. The spirit's A-OK, -okay, but our bodies do. Look, I know I'm sexy, but this is not my recreated body. This is the same body I've always had. And sometimes it gets afflicted with illness, and sometimes I need a healing touch from the Lord in my physical body. Isaiah 53, 4 says, Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. The Hebrew text says illnesses. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. The Hebrew says it was our pains that weighed him down. We don't have illness in our spirit. We don't have pain in our spirit. We have those things in our physical bodies. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Jesus took a beating like no other before he went to the cross. And every blow that cut into his flesh was for the healing of our physical bodies. Jesus died so we could have eternal life. His body was broken so that ours could be made whole. Acts 10.38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. 
who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. You say, John, I believe it. I believe it. Or I want to believe it. Help my unbelief. How can we act on that? How can I take action over illness? Ask and believe. Now that sounds easy, but it's not. Ask and believe. And maybe... At the moment you believe, maybe you'll receive an instant healing. I've seen it. I've had it happen to me. And boom, you got it. Maybe you'll ask and you won't feel anything. And you're going to say, did I just waste my time? You didn't. Because sometimes you need to believe it and you need to hold on to that belief because adversity is coming to attack you. And I want to encourage you to keep Believing it. Keep your focus on the answer, not the problem. Keep your focus on your healing. Don't stop believing until you have the deliverance. The Bible calls Abraham the father of our faith. Romans 4.18 tells us that even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. What's this guy's problem? Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. It says Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. Look, Peter saw Jesus walking on the water. And he said, Jesus, if that's you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus said, come. And Peter got out of the boat and started walking across the water. He was heading to Jesus. And then adversity came against his belief. And the wind and the waves came up. And Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. And he saw the wind and the waves. And he started to sink. Maybe you're believing for something impossible. Maybe you're believing for something the doctors say can't happen. Well, and the second you start believing, guess what? You're going to see adversity. The wind and the waves are going to come up. But I'm telling you that if you'll keep your focus on Jesus and keep walking towards him, that your deliverance is there and you can have it in Jesus' name. Bible says, in fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. That's what it's all about. Your healing isn't about you. It's about bringing glory to God. Let your focus be on that. God, I'm asking for you to heal me because I want you to have great glory from it. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Jesus came to set us free from oppression. What oppression? All oppression. Why is this important to God? Because sickness diverts our focus from the calling that God's placed on our lives. It zaps our energy. It keeps us from accomplishing the tasks, that, that special work that he's given each of us. It, it keeps us from accomplishing those tasks. So God cares. God cares about our deliverance. Don't give up for looking for your healing. Continue looking for Jesus. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is still alive, and he hasn't changed because of Jesus. All this is because of Jesus this morning. Everything we're talking about is because of Jesus. He's worthy of our praise, church. All of this is because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, our needs are met. Because of Jesus, our needs are met. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 8.7 you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. How does he make us rich? What's the means by which he makes us rich? In a way we would have never thought of ourselves, I'll tell you that. Amen. He brings us riches through giving it all away. We would never come up with that on our own. That has to come from God. Luke 6.38 says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and pouring into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount we get back. When we manage money God's way, we never have to fear not having enough. How do we take action over lack? How do we take action over poverty? Boy, this is the shortest point of the day give through giving and it works 
I'm a living testimony that it works. During the times in my life, and you wouldn't know this because I don't share it with everyone, but during times in my life when the finances are tight, we give. Those, those are the times to give. The time to give is, is when you're tight. And God has delivered us time and time and time again. It, it works so well. This is second nature to us. And, and let it be second nature to you. God will meet your needs. He'll never fail you. Taking action over poverty. And lastly, this morning, as the worship team joins me, because of Jesus, we have purpose. Now, we touched on this earlier, but I want to go further with it. Because of Jesus, it's all because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, we have purpose. And what does purpose give us? It gives us four things. First, we all have a common mission. We all, all of us, have a common mission. And it's called the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We have a baptism service coming up on September the 20th. And if you've never been baptized or if you're watching us online and you've never been baptized, I want to encourage you to be, participate in that service. Contact us and sign up today for that service. Teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. Because of Jesus, we all have a common mission. Because of Jesus, we all have a common helper. A helper to complete that mission. John 14 says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. And Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. We have a common mission of spreading the gospel, and we have a common helper in the Holy Spirit to help us get that done. You know, every one of our purposes are different. Every one of our, the things we do on a daily basis is different, but they all lead to the same place, and that's influencing somebody for Jesus Christ. Maybe you don't even have to say a word. Maybe it's just in your actions, but every one of us has that same plan and that same helper. What else? Because of Jesus, we all have power over the enemy. I mean, it wouldn't be much of a plan if the enemy could just stop everything we do. Our plan would stop pretty quick. But Jesus has given us power over the enemy. 1 John 4, 4 tells us, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Luke 10, 38 says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Philippians 4, 13 tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because of Jesus, we have power over the enemy. And because of Jesus, we all have access to the help that we need. We all have access to the help that we need. John 14, 12, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, it starts with belief. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do. If you believe in me, your actions will be my actions. And greater works than these will he do. Why? Because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, whatever you ask in my name, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Why? That the Father may be glorified. It's all about God in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Our faith is belief combined with action. And we've all had areas of our life where we've become the meh emoji. We've had areas of our life that have become dormant. And this is a game changer today because I want you to know that the impossible is possible. I want you to know that maybe you had a dream in your life and something happened that extinguished that fire. It can be relit today. You can go back to believing for that dream. And the enemy may try to get in your way, but he's going to regret it because you can steamroll over him every time. And we've all been tasked with reaching the world for Jesus Christ. There's people that you can reach that I could never reach and vice versa. The devil can throw up roadblocks and delay outcomes, but if you don't quit, you can't lose. Not you won't lose, you can't lose.
news. And as you stand with me this morning, I want to encourage you today to take action. I want to encourage you. There's areas of your life that you've become numb. There's areas of your life that have begun to lay dormant. But let this moment be your point of contact. Let this moment be the turning point of your walk with Christ. And if you're ready, I challenge you this morning to bow your heads and lift your arms and online, lift your arms in this place and receive this over your life today. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I declare that today is an awakening in the people of God. And I'm asking for a fresh and powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place and online right now in the name of Jesus. Mobilize us for action. Mobilize us for revival. Position us for growth, increase, and life-changing purpose. Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I break your power and stronghold off of every single person who will receive it. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, now celebrate like you've got it. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Most importantly this morning, one final item, most importantly this morning, because of Jesus, eternal life is ours. 1 John 5, 13, these things I have written to you who believe, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. First, we believe. Will you believe today? Believe in Jesus. Believe that he died for your sin and for my sin. Believe that he's a difference maker. Believe that God raised him from the dead. Believe that your future is in him. Believe that he's got your back. Believe that he's going to take care of you. Believe in Jesus. And if you'll believe it, now we need to act on it with all heads bowed and all eyes closed. Here in the room, if that's you, in a moment I'm going to ask you to slip up your hand as your action. Say, I believe that. I want to begin a new life with Christ. Or maybe you had an area of your life that's been lying dormant and you want to recommit to Christ today. That same action is for you. Online, your action is going to be to type the word Jesus. Type Jesus on the count of three if you're ready to begin a new life or recommit. Take action and slip up your hand. One, two, three. Slip up your hand where I can see it. I see you there, sir. I see you there in the back. Slip up your hand where I can see it today online. Type in Jesus as your point of action, as your point of contact. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you need to recommit something to him, slip up your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you. I'm not a priest. You don't need me to get to God. But I just want to lead you in a prayer this morning. And I'm going to ask if everybody here in the room and everybody online will repeat this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord Jesus, you are that Savior. Come into my life. Wash me clean of my sin. And make me brand new. I believe in you. I believe you died for me. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Now take my life and do something great with it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Hallelujah. The angels in heaven are celebrating that. We're celebrating it as well. We're so happy that you joined us in person and joined us online. And if you made that decision online, 
please contact us. We want to know. And if you made that decision in the room, we have a special gift for you. It's a new believers packet. Don't leave without that today. Our boys in blue, the ushers are walking around, and they have those for you today. If you need prayer in any area of your life, we want to pray with you. We'll be down front after service and online if you need prayer. We want to pray with you too. Contact us in Jesus' name. And like we always do, we'll leave this place with a shout. This is hallelujah on three. Here we go. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Have a great week.